Hey everybody, welcome to Renegade Con Presents Board Game the Game Show. Uh, I'm looking over to see if we are live. I'm talking to folks, Steve. We're set up. We're trying to make sure just a couple minutes early that we're ready. Uh, in theory, I should be on. So, hey, if you're out there, please say hey to me. I'm trying to check everything to see if I can see you. Uh, right now, I'm also watching over here, uh, Twitch as well, and I am not seeing myself, which is making me very nervous as we get ready for this. Uh, I'm going to actually try and talk to you in the chat over here. Does anyone see me? I should be up. Uh, let's take a look. Frantic message is coming in as we make sure we're up and ready to go. In theory, I should be on, and I am. I just can't see myself over here. I am visible. Welcome to Board Game the Game Show. Uh, I guess, see, here's how I feel. Because it's past the late show, I feel like the late show is technically uh, closing everything for the day. So I like to think of myself as pirate television at this. I don't have an eye patch. Uh, it's a whole thing. Uh, but we are about to play trivia for fabulous prizes. Let me uh, put some things on the screen for you. Let me show you what we're doing. Uh, game number one we're going to play is a trivia challenge. Top prize is a $100 gift card for Renegade Games. Second will get you 50. Third will get you 25. Uh, yeah, we're about to start that up. If you've played any of my games before, you know this is going to work. If you're out there, if you want to play, and I feel like if you're watching, you want to play. Uh, at this time, I would say get out a second device. Anything else that you can use to play that you can that you can uh, touch and use as a controller. If you've played something like you don't know Jack, any of the Jackbox games, this is gonna be super simple for you. Let me show you my second screen so that you know what we're doing. Scan that code in the bottom left hand corner of the screen that I've shared with you. Or if you really hate QR codes, I don't know why you would. Maybe you do. Uh, go to ringin.games and enter the code Renegade Con. That's gonna get you in. Uh, Chris, welcome. Toro, we are about to do this. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up, Renegades? Uh, I did not get coffee. Uh, Chris, I told Chris that I was going to get coffee. Uh, but I do have a Coke right here, and I am ready to go to just be so high energy. Uh, if you notice, every once in a while, I'm going to be looking over here uh, because this is where I can see what you're commenting. And with the way that I'm brought into the system, I have to look over at your comments, so don't worry. I'm still going to talk to you. I still see that you're there. I just have to look over here uh, to do it. So we are about to begin. Thank you so much for joining me here for the, the, the I guess, the super late show. Uh, I'm following the late show today. Sunday, I'm following the morning show. Hey, do you have a regularly scheduled show? I'll come. I'll just come right after you. Uh, if you want to jump in the game, once again, scan that code in the bottom left-hand corner. We're going to get you in. Let me get my screen up and see how many players I have in. Uh, it looks like I have three players in right now. I have three top prizes. So I'm going to tell you, tell literally every person you've ever met to come in and jump in. You can win. We are going to give out three prizes in this trivia showdown that's about to begin in just a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah, Prozden, the odds are not bad right now. Although I would also like you to tell your friends so we have a few more people. Four players in the game. Uh, once again, we would love to see you play this. It's a 15-question game. Game show rules. As we go along, the values are going to go up for your chance at fabulous prizes. Once again, first place for game number one is a $100 uh, Renegade Games gift certificate uh, that we would love to give you. Second place, $50 gift certificate. Third place, $25 gift certificate. And we're playing a second game after that that's a more opinion-based game. That is also going to have prizes not as fabulous as game number one. Uh, once again, we're going to start up in just a couple of minutes. If you're out there, please say hi. Let me know how you're doing. Looks like 16 viewers, four people in the game. Once again, if you want to play, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for you. Nope, that's a bad idea. I'm going to do that. <laughs> Scan that QR code in the bottom left-hand corner with whatever you have. Or uh, if you want to play on a browser, might be a little hard for you, only because I think you're going to be a little bit slower as you hear the questions. Uh, but go to ringin.games, enter the code RENEGADECON. That's going to get you in. It is free to enter. It is free to play. And the top three players are going to win uh, what I think are fabulous prizes. Uh, let's take a look. No comments coming over. Let me look at the time. Technically, start time is in about two minutes. I'm going to give people a couple minutes to get in the game. Six players are in right now. I promise you, we are giving away real prizes. If you're out there and you're watching, you should get in. Uh, it's going to be a trivia game. 
Uh, the faster you answer, the more points it's going to be worth. Some of the questions are about Renegade things. Some of them aren't. Some of them are just trivia. Uh, and a lot of them are sort of about Renegade things, but they're kind of trivia. And I found a way to hook them together. So be ready for all that. We're going to start up in just a moment. Once again, $100 top prize. Well, $100 gift certificate to the Renegade Store top prize to get in. That is the sound. Uh, just so you know out there, uh, guys, gals, non-binary pals, that is the sound of a Coke Zero. I do not want you to think that I would dare uh, drink anything harder than that while running the game. Once again, here in the late night hour, we're going to start up in just a moment. If you want in, even if you're out there and you can't win the prizes, if you're just around and you're 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 another renegade folk, feel free to get in the game. We'll figure it out when it's all over and figure out where the prizes go. Six players are in the game. Uh, we can play up to just hundreds of people. Uh, if you want in, once again, this is the time. Scan that code in the bottom left-hand corner of that screen, that big screen there that says Renegade Con Virtual Trivia Spectacular. Uh, if for any reason you can't get in the game and you're having a problem with it, tell me in chat why you can't so that I can make sure that you can. Uh, we are about to start, and I'm going to note that in the chat as well. Sorry, I have so many keyboards, so many places. Occasionally, you're going to see my attention going over there rather than right here uh, where you would want my attention to be. Once again, we're starting our competition in just a moment. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, James. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we're about to start in just a moment. If you want in, scan that QR code in the bottom left it down. Let me get it right down there, down there. Scan that QR code with your cell phone or any other device that you have. Uh, just pull out your camera, point it at it. It'll bring up some sort of a pop-up that says, do you want to go to the website? Yes, you do! Because uh, that's how you get in the game. You'll be using your phone or whatever device you have as a controller to play in the game. The faster you answer, the more points it's worth. Um, I will also warn you, because we're going to start in just a moment. Uh, there is just a heck of a lag between what I'm saying and it getting to Twitch and you seeing it. So that means this. Uh, make sure you're staring at your screen when the game starts. Uh, the faster you answer, the more points it's worth. That means you should be staring at your screen. Don't worry about when I read the question to you. Uh, worry about when it pops up on your screens. That's sort of a warning I want to make sure uh, that I give you. I'm also going to type it in. Make sure... When we start, you watch your device and not me because lag. Once again, we're going to start up in just a moment. We have a bell time of 11 o'clock on the east, 8 on the west. It's two minutes past. We're about to start. 11 players are in the game. I'm going to give you a minute to just get in here. I will tell you, if you have specialized knowledge about the Power Rangers, it's going to help you a little bit. If you don't, it's not going to hurt you a ton, but if you were to know some things about the Power Rangers, it might, it might help you a little bit, especially as we get a little later into the game. Hey... Everybody out and lag is real, folks. 11 players in the game. I'm going to wait just a moment. I was hoping to get a little bit more than this before we start. But hey, uh, we have a $100 top prize. Uh, so it's uh, pretty good odds right now that you're going to win that. Once again, top three players. Uh, Jay is saying can't get in. Jay, scan that code in the bottom left-hand corner. Scan to join. That should bring you right in. If the code doesn't work, uh, go to ringin.games and enter the code RENEGADECON. And then it's going to ask you for a nickname. Give it your nickname. Uh, I'll wait just a moment. I want everybody that can possibly get in. Uh, Jay, scan that code in the bottom left-hand corner. That should get you right in. Um, if it can, I can't imagine what's up. But feel free, once again, if that code doesn't work, uh, open up a browser, any browser window uh, on any device. Go to ringin.games and then enter the code RENEGADECON. And that should get you in. I'm going to make a note here. Are you in yet? with a question mark. I want to make sure I have you 11 players in the game. Once I get the 12th player, we will do it. People are noting. Uh-oh. Uh, so it looks like in an attempt to help, uh, it looks like the bot has come in. Uh,
Yep, did the same thing to me. I tried to give you that link. If it's at the bottom of the screen, if you take a look where it says to play, go to ringin.games. It is right there. QR code worked good for me. Most people seem to be getting it. Looks like I have 12 players. Uh, it looks like we are about to start, folks. Once again, please pay attention to your screens because this is a game about speed. Good luck to each and every one of you. And in just a couple of minutes, we're going to give out $175 worth of gift certificates. Here we go. Let's start the game. 10, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here we go, folks. Which of these historical figures is being added to the new deluxe edition of World's Fair 1893? Susan B. Anthony, Ida B. Wells, Frederick Douglass, or Irvin Garland Penn. Which of those figures is being added to the new deluxe edition of World's Fair 1893. That's your opening question of the game. Let's take a look. All answers are in. Let's see how you did. 60% of the room giving me Frederick Douglass. 27% going for Susan B. Anthony. One guess each of Ida B. Wells and Irvin Garland Penn. Uh, I, uh, Chris Knight, what happened to nine? I'm not allowed to have a nine, Chris. I'm never allowed to have a nine. I do not know why. Uh, once again, Frederick Douglass, Susan B. Anthony getting some of the action. One person for Ida B. Wells, one person for uh, Irvin Garland Penn. The correct answer is all of them. All of them are being added to the new edition of the game. And so is Fanny Barrier Williams. All of them will be added to the new version of World's Fair 1893. This is just one to get you used to the game. Everybody got points on this one. The faster you answer, the better it went. It was 100 points. Uh, it was a cheap plug for the game. I know the rest of them aren't going to be. But that's one for you. Let's look at the scores. Alex B leading with 91. Lorive with 89. Izir 1228 with 86. Those are your top three possessions. Uh, positions. I don't know why I said possessions. It just came out that way. Uh, tie for fourth at 84. Close game at the top. Uh, we are about to jump in. One person noting Ranger Liz noting hype. The game looks, I love the new box, but I, I like the game. So just making the game again with more stuff and cooler. Uh, is just awesome. Now, uh, once again, that is the one hard plug I'll be doing in this game. Uh, the rest of the questions are going to be real questions, but I thought it would get you used to the system, get you used to the game, get you used to how it works. Now it's time to move on to question number two. Here we go. The actor who played Scott Pilgrim in the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World also voiced the Lego version of which comic book character? Spider-Man, Robin, Beast Boy, or The Flash? Once again, the actor who played Scott Pilgrim the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World also voiced the Lego version of which comic book character? Uh, that's what we're looking at here. Taking a look to see if there's any comments coming in. Nothing coming in right now, so I'm just going to stare forward and keep talking to you, hitting you with the truth. Let's take a look and see how you answered. Third of the room giving me Spider-Man. Third of the room guessing Robin. Couple guests, uh, guess, guesses uh, on Beast Boy. Two guesses on The Flash. Uh, Michael Sarah, of course, played Scott Pilgrim. Michael Sarah was also Lego Robin. Lego Robin, and I believe uh, Batman in Lego Batman was Lego Robin. Uh, that's the correct answer. Let's look at the scores. Lorive taking a one point lead with 174. Proz in second at 173. It's a one point game up at the top. Watch yourselves. Uh, Beth H in third with 169. Uh, it is a five-point game between first and third. Once again, first place, getting that $100 gift certificate or gift card, depending, I guess, on how old you are. Uh, in second place, a uh, $50 gift card going to Praz. Third place, $25 gift card going to Beth. Uh, to get those gift cards at the end of the game, if you happen to win, talk to Chris. Uh, he'll get you everything. Or um, send something to conventions at renegadegames.com. I believe I have that, right? Chris, if I don't, uh, feel free to correct me. We're about to move on. Question number three, 100 points coming your way. What animal is this? Is that an Altiplano, an emu, a llama, or an alpaca? Which of those are you looking at on that box? It is, is it an Altiplano, an emu, an emu, an emu, a llama, or an alpaca? It's been one of those days. I'm getting a lot of like one letter mistakes, like calling in an emu an emo. I don't know what that's about. Let me take a quick sip and let's see how you answered. 50% of the room guessing an alpaca, 36% of the room guessing a llama. No one went with Emu. Two people guessed an Alta Plano because it's on the box. Uh, Alta Plano is talking about the location of where the game takes place, not the animal you see. So here's the thing, and I thought this was going to be uh, a more difficult question than it needed to be. 
is a lot of people mix up llamas and alpacas. So llamas have much bigger ears than alpacas do. You're looking at an alpaca there. 50% of the room getting it right for 100 points or as many as 100 points. Let's see what that does to the scores. Beth H is taking a lead at 266, 10 points ahead of Larive at uh, 256. And Alex being third at a buck 86. Still a very close game. 100 point question still coming your way. Remember, top three places are going to win prizes. We're playing a second game after this called the In Crowd. It's all opinion based. You can still win prizes there. It's going to be 50, 25, and 25 in the second game. So don't go anywhere. Stick with me. Talk to everybody. Uh, just literally every person you know. Uh, tell them to come over. I'd love to see them. We're about to move on. Question number four coming your way. Here we go. This comic book was seen in what famous movie? Was it The Watchmen, Batman, Back to the Future, or Ghostbusters? This comic book was seen in which of those movies? The Watchmen, the 1989 version of Batman, Back to the Future, or Ghostbusters? I did this because if you take a look on the Renegade website, you're going to see a lot of puzzles uh, that very much remind me of this cover. Uh, I know they're not. I know they're not. I know they're from other properties within the Renegade family, uh, but they remind me of this Tales from Space. Uh, let's take a look and see what you have to say. 27% of the room giving me Ghostbusters. 53% the Wisdom of the Commons says it's Back to the Future. A couple people guessing the Watchmen. No one guessing Batman. None of you. Uh, guessing 1989 Batman. I specifically put 1989 because I thought that might trick you because it's so specific, uh, but that didn't work. Uh, as a 50-50 as a room, you're going with Back to the Future and Ghostbusters. The correct answer is Back to the Future. Uh, this is the comic book uh, that Marty's dad has uh, when he's laying down when Marty is dressed in the full like hazmat suit and just hits him with rock music. Uh, he knew that it would work because of this Tales from Space. Uh, but I think it very much looks like a lot of the comic books that go along with the Kids on Bikes property. Uh, so I thought I would put it in there. I thought it was cool. So a bunch of people getting that one right. Back to the Future. Eight people getting that right and scoring points. Let's take a look. Beth H. Still leading, uh, but not by as much. 346 to 342. Lareve in second place. And uh, Alex B. in third with 273. A four-point game at the top. We have awarded 400 points so far. So it is a 1% difference between first place and second place. Let's take a look. Let's see what's coming up on the chat. Uh, they do make nice sweaters there. Uh, Darth Vader will melt your brain. Definitely. That is literally where that's from. Good work, Chris. I knew somebody would be right there. I knew someone would get it. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Take a quick sip. We're about to move on to question number five. Question number five coming your way. 100 points. Watch your screens. Happy Lunar New Year. This is the year of the what? The ox, the tiger, the rat, or the dragon? Happy Lunar New Year. It just happens to be Lunar New Year today. No other reason to do this question. I just wanted a chance to celebrate it in trivia form, and this is how I can do it. Year of the ox, the year of the tiger, year of the rat, or year of the dragon. What year is it this year? What animal are we celebrating? Uh, let's take a look and see how you answered. 79% of the room giving me the ox. 14% going for the tiger. 7 for the rat. Nobody guessing the dragon. You're right. The dragon's wrong. The correct answer is, in fact, the ox. It was actually very hard to find a gift for this that didn't just have, like, an, a really chibi ox waving at you, wishing you a happy new year. That was very difficult to find. But, yes, yeah, 79% of the room getting it right. Uh... Happy Year of the Ox, everybody. Uh, don't worry, most of the questions are not going to be quite this straightforward, but I just saw no reason not to do it. We're here. Let's enjoy it. Thank you for coming out to Renegade Con, and uh, Happy Lunar New Year. Let's take a look. Beth leading with all of the fours. Four, 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 fours across the board. Lareve in second with 438. Alex B in third with 371. The top three uh, have been pretty solid so far, but don't worry, a lot more points are coming your way. Okay, Baxter, 1990. Uh, if you want to play the game, take any device. Scan that QR code that's down there. Scan that QR code. It's going to bring the game up on your phone. That's going to give you a chance to play and win. Once again, if you want the game, if you're brand new, go here with your phone or whatever other device you have. Scan that QR code that says scan to join. That's going to get you in the game. You've missed five questions, but a lot of points are still available. 
Uh, so don't worry about it. You still have a chance to get in, and you're definitely going to be in on game number two. Once again, if you want to scan that code in the bottom left-hand corner or uh, on any web-based device, uh, go to ringin.games and enter the code RENEGADECON. That will get you in the game. Once again, we would love to have you. Uh, Baxter, good luck. Welcome to the game. Uh, I will tell you the same thing I told everybody else. Uh, pay attention to your screen because this is a game about speed. The faster you answer, the more points it's worth. And we're about to head into round number two. 200 points per question. The values have doubled. Here we go. What classic Looney Tunes character suffers from rhoticism? Is it Elmer Fudd, Marvin the Martian, Speedy Gonzalez, or Tweety? Which classic character uh, from the Looney Tunes suffers from rhoticism? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I feel like I might not be, but what classic Looney Tunes character suffers from rhoticism? Elmer Fudd, Marvin the Martian, Speedy Gonzalez, or Tweety? Let's take a look. I believe all answers are in. Let's take a look here. 86% of the room giving me Elmer Fudd. Two people guessing Speedy Gonzalez. Uh, Marvin the Martian, Tweety are both out. You're right as a room. Those are both incorrect. You have the right 50-50 between Elmer Fudd and Speedy Gonzalez. The correct answer. Is Elmer Fudd? Let's send you some information. Uh, Rhoticism is the inability to pronounce or difficulty in pronouncing R sounds. So be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. Uh, all of those R's that are missing is exactly what that is. And 86% of you knew that or just decided to hit the first one because speed seemed more important to you. Good work. Let's take a look and see what that does to the scores. Beth leading with 630, a nine-point lead over Larive. Uh, Alex B in third with 553, uh, holding off third place by about 40 points. It's a tight game there. I'm hoping we got Baxter in the game. 16 players are here. So I hope that's you Baxter. I hope you're my 16th player in the game. Pardon me. <coughs> you should not try to talk and have a sip of soda at the same time. Very, very important. Sorry about that, folks. Let's get back in the game. 200 more points. Question number seven coming your way. Here we go. What is the character's name shown here? Is this Boba Fett, Moff Gideon, Fennec Shand, or Lang? It's just a good old-fashioned nerd question. That's what we're giving you there. Uh, good luck with that one. We're going to bounce all over <coughs> the geek world here through our game today. Once again, not everything's going to be about something directly Renegade related. Some of it's just going to be trivia. Are you looking at Boba Fett, Moff Gideon, Fennec Shand, or Lang? Let's take a look at his room. 25% of the room says Fennec Shand. One guess of Moff Gideon. One guess of Lang. 63% of the room goes for Boba Fett. Uh, so here's what I'll tell you. You once again as a room have the correct 50-50 between Boba Fett and Fennec Shand. Moff Gideon and Lang are both wrong. Uh, you're, I, there's nothing else I can say. You're, you're just wrong. I'm sorry, both of you. Uh, Boba Fett and Fennec Shan is your call. The correct answer is Boba Fett. 63% of the room getting it right. Wisdom of the Commons holds out again. Let's take a look at notes. Uh, here we go. He has come to claim his armor from Mando. There you go. Uh, that That's all the notes I have. Sorry, folks. Let's take a look at the scores. Beth still leading with nearly 800 points. Uh, now Alex B has jumped up to second. Larive jumped down to third. Uh, 748, 799, 51-point eh, game as I'm counting it. Very close. Once again, these point values are going up, and they're going to start to go up pretty sharply when we get out of round two. When we're done round two and we head into the last three questions, they just start to take off like a rocket. So remember, you're not out of the game yet, no matter where you are. We're going to move on. Question number eight, 200 points. Your way right now. Here we go. The, the first few episodes of WandaVision on Disney Plus have all, all have what TV genre in common? Soap operas, sitcoms, game shows, or crime drama? Once again, the first few episodes of WandaVision on Disney Plus all have what TV genre in common? So, if you're like me and The Mandalorian was not your thing, maybe WandaVision is. We're taking our tour through Disney Plus right now. Once again, First few episodes of WandaVision on Disney Plus have all the same TV genre in common. Soap opera, sitcoms, game shows, or crime drama. 88% of the room giving me sitcoms. One guess of crime drama, one guess of soap operas. I would have to guess the person that hit soap operas meant to hit sitcoms and got it wrong. The correct answer is sitcoms. 
Uh, every episode has been a different sitcom from a different part of television history. And I'm not going to tell you anything else because I'm not going to spoil it for you. But I will tell you that the early episodes all deal uh, with different sitcoms of different times in our sitcom timeline, which is uh, really, really cool to see. It's neat to see these characters do that. Let's take a look and see what does the scores. Beth H leading with 976. Alex in second, back by 36 or 46 points. Lareve in third uh, by a cool nearly 200 points. There is a big gap that is starting to form between the top two players and the rest of the field. Don't worry, you're not out of it yet. A lot of questions left, a lot of points available. Taking a look to see if there's any notes. If anybody has anything to say? No, looks like nobody does. I'm going to keep plugging on. Here we go. Question number nine coming your way right now. Question nine, 200 points. Here we go. Which of these oldest trick in the book sleight of hand tricks would you most commonly see the use of a magic wand? The ambitious ace, the cups and balls, the classic elephant trick, or the classic coin transposition? Uh, it was as close as I get to duel of wands. I thought I would ask you a question about magic wands. Why not? Once again, which of these oldest trick in the book sleight of hand tricks would be most common? Would you most commonly see the use of a magic wand? Uh, and there is one. I'm not going to say you can't really see a magic wand for any trick, but one of these four, uh, it is most often used in. Uh, let's take a look. 50% of the room give me the cups and balls. There are guesses of all of the rest of them. Okay, so I'm going to start running through them for you. Uh, the ambitious ace is a trick where you show someone an ace, you put it in the deck, and then you pull that ace out again and again and again and again and out of your pocket and over there. But usually just uses a person and a deck of cards. The ambitious ace is the wrong answer. The classic coin transposition is as simple as I show you my two hands. I do some things and I show you a coin. Uh, just uses my hands and a coin. Your 50-50 is a classic elephant trick or the cups and balls, the correct answer. Is the cups and balls. So the classic elephant trick is what's called a mentalism trick where I ask you a bunch of unrelated mathematic questions that lead you to a certain answer. And then I ask you a couple more questions in rapid succession that normally has you say a certain set of lines that tells me about a gray elephant from Denmark. If you ever look up gray elephant from Denmark, it'll actually just tell you the entire trick, but it's only done with me talking to you. I decided not to do it here uh, because with the lag, I'm not really sure I could make it work. Uh, but it is one that works most times on people uh, because the way that you do the trick sort of forces them into a certain pattern of thought. It's called a mentalism trick. The cups and balls, uh, three cups, three balls and a magic wand and the cups disappear and or the balls disappear and reappear in the cups. It's a thing to see. Uh, Penn and Teller do a version without a wand and with clear cups that is well worth checking out. Uh, oh boy, I lost some easy questions, but I have to say the reason on your normal show. Fair enough. Uh, Bruce must, <laughs> Bruce must have been an only child, very self-entertained. Absolutely. I studied magic for years. That's what this guy did. That's why I have a gold background now. Uh, let's take a look at your scores. Alex leading with 1108. Alex has been waiting for the magic wand question. Uh, Beth in second with 896. Chris is how I'm going to guess it said in third with 838. I will tell you, if I'm saying it wrong, Chris, uh, please correct me in chat uh, because it's a new name for me. So I like learning new names. Uh, so just let me know if I'm mispronouncing it. I want to make sure I get it right. Uh, but I'm going to say this, Chris, right now until you correct me over there. Uh, also, no, Chris, now who watches Fool Us with Penn and Teller? They do have an amazing cups and balls. We're about to move on to question number 10. 200 points coming your way. Here we go. Which meat is traditionally a part of the dish Eggs Benedict? Beef, ham, pastrami, or turkey? Uh, showing you Gudetama, the tricky egg card game. I believe back in print, if I understood what I was reading correctly. So if you want to check out the Gudetama game, great time to do it. Yes, you may think, but Bruce, this feels so loosely tied to the game itself. Yes, that's what a lot of this is going to be, is me ever so loosely threading a trivia question uh, to a renegade game as best I can. Because I figured, let's do some trivia. Let's do some trivia tonight. Uh, let's see how you answered. 94% of the room gives me ham. One person gives me pastrami. Must have meant to hit ham and didn't. Ham is absolutely the correct answer. So many points being handed out on this one. Uh, on the good Atama question, makes me happy to see that with the happy little egg. Uh, let's take a look. Alex Beat leading with 1304, Beth H with 1168. And I think it's Chris 
uh, with 1028. I have not seen correction, so I'm led to believe that I've got Chris right, in which case I'm real happy about that. Uh, we are about to move on. Let's take a look. Smoked salmon is so good on it. So is pastrami. Chris talking to me here. Definitely uh, really, really good on it, but not the right answer to the question. So we are about to move into round three, the final round of the game. Five questions in round three, and they're each going to become more valuable than the last. It is now time for your 300-point question coming your way right now. It's Power Rangers time. Where is Zordon from? Idoni? Aquatar? KO35? Or Eltar? Where is Zordon from? Are you? Did you come because you love the Power Rangers? This is your question. Get them. Get them. Now is your time. 300-point question. Time to catch them in the turns. Welcome. Let's take a look. 69, or as I like to say it, so I don't have to follow it with any words, almost 70% of the room gives me Eltar. 19% uh, guessing KO35. Uh, one on Edoni, one on Equitar, the correct answer is Eltar. Good work. Eltar, the correct answer on that one. 11 people getting points on this one. Uh, let's see what that did to the scores. Alex B leading with 1568. Uh, J B S G 14 uh, in second. Chris in third to Jibsg 14. Uh, I think of you as a robot in my head because that sounds like a robot name. Uh, Jibsg 14. Good work. Uh, Chris in third with uh, 1211. Uh, that was your 300 point question. So Power Rangers fans, that was the one for you. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed it. That was my that was my attempt to help you. Now we're we're headed to just we're headed to trivia again. Uh, question number 12 coming your way. Here we go. Ritsuko loves death metal, and since she does, which of these bands would she most likely enjoy? The Gravediggers, MGMT, Sepultura, or Dead by Sunrise? Which of those bands? Retsuko loves death metal. Retsuko leaves work, sings death metal. Since she does that, which of those would she most likely enjoy? Only one of those four is a defined death metal band. You're going to see some other things there, but only one is an actual death metal band. Let's take a look. 44% give me the grave diggers. No one goes MGMT. You're right. Good work. 19% uh, giving me Sepultura. 38% guessing Dead by Sunrise. So. Uh, MGMT, you're, you're absolutely right. That was not the correct answer. Uh, but this one I think is going to turn the game around a little bit. The correct answer is Sepultura. Sepultura, the correct answer. Let's send you some notes. So Gravediggers are death hip hop and the group features members of the Wu-Tang Clan. MGMT are pop rock, though. If you look at the video for kids, it does look like something a death metal band would make. And Dead by Sunrise is an electric band fronted by Chester Bennington, most famously of Linkin Park. The correct answer on this one was Sepultura, considered probably one of the most popular bands in all of death metal. Uh, let's take a look and see what that does the scores. Alex B still with a strong lead. J coming up to the game. Welcome to the game. J1482 on death metal. And Jibsga14. Jibsga14 in third place. Once again, remember, first place, $100 gift card for Renegade Games. Second place, $50 gift card, Renegade Games. Third place, $25 gift card. You guessed it. Renegade Games. Let's take a look, see if anything else came across. Prozden noting they have to get that game. The game looks awesome. And anytime I can uh, make an Agritsuko reference, I like to. And I got a chance to use death metal in this game. It made me very happy. Thank you for being a part of it. Uh, we are moving on. Question number 13 worth 500 points. Here we go. In English, a castel is a human tower built traditionally at festivals in Catalonia. In which country is the region of Catalonia? Italy, Portugal, Spain, or France? Uh, that's what the game's about. If you played the game, this should be pretty easy for you. But in English, a castel is a human tower uh, built at festivals in Catalonia. It's actually considered uh, historically uh, to be one of the preserved parts of our world heritage. UNESCO says it is a protected part of our heritage. Uh, there's an entire, you may have heard of UNESCO buildings, uh, where it's the most important buildings uh, that we have that are protected. Things, I believe the Leaning Tower Pisa might be in there, but most like any of your big buildings uh, that are historically important to the world are UNESCO sites. Apparently, the Castel Towers uh, built at the festivals in Catalonia is considered this part of history that at any moment could disappear. It's considered like language uh, where it should be protected because it could be lost at any moment. So yeah, there you go. Let's take a look and see how you answered. 
50% of the room guessing Spain, and then a solid 25% on both Italy and Portugal, figuring it could be either. Uh, no one guessing France. Good work. It's not in France. The correct answer is Spain. Spain, the correct answer on that one. If I remember correctly uh, from the work I did researching these questions, uh, Barcelona is in uh, part of Catalonia. Uh, Catalonia is a part of Spain. Uh, if you remember, so I'm going to try, if you're old, you're going to remember this. If you're young, you may remember it just by references from the past. Uh, but the 1992 Olympics was in Barcelona. And that was where we sent the first dream team of all of the greatest basketball players ever. Uh, so if you're like me, that's why Barcelona means anything to you. Let's see what that does to the scores. Alex B crossing the 2000 mark with 2050. J holding right in there with 1963, a uh, less than a hundred point game at the top. Uh, third place, James with 1491 knocking at the door. Uh, let's take a look. No notes coming over. I like to look over here every once in a while, see if you're talking to me. Uh, if you do, I'll, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. I'm, I'm interested. I'm watching the chat. We're about to move on. So it's time for my pep talk, folks. There are 1,750 points left in the game in two questions. There are almost as many points remaining as there have been scored. You are not mathematically out of this yet. You may not be in great shape, but you're not mathematically out of the game. You still have a chance to get in here and win something. We're about to do it. I'm about to pull the trigger. No, there's no 10,000 point question. Although the last question is, well, okay. 1,750 points in two questions. 750 points coming your way. Here we go. Which of these games is the higher ranking game on Board Game Geek right now? Fox in the Forest, Clank in Space, Lanterns, or Trajan? Which of those is the higher ranking game on Board Game Geek right now? Fox in the Forest, Clank in Space, Lanterns, or Trajan? Which of those is the higher ranking of the uh, Renegade Games games? That's what all these happen to be. Although none of them are the highest ranking game, Clank. I believe, if I remember correctly, is the highest ranking. Let's take a look. 13% guessing the Fox in the Forest. 56% of the room guessing Clank in Space. One person guessing Lanterns. 25% of the room giving me Trajan. The correct answer is Trajan. Let's send some notes over to you. Here are the current rankings. Trajan is currently number 95. Clank in Space is 105. The Fox in the Forest is 416. And Lanterns is 737 on the total Board Game Geek list. I want to say that Clank itself is up in the top 300, or I'm sorry, up in the top 30 somewhere. Uh, but Trajan at number 95, probably getting a lot of its popularity from its first printing. And then with the new printing from Renegade just took off like a rocket. A uh, really great game. Clearly a lot of people love it. Of those four games, it is the highest ranking on Board Game Geek right now. Let's take a look. Jay leading with 2504. James in second with 2071. Alex B with 20. 50 as we head into the final question. Uh, Eb Wonder noting, uh, yeah, Lanterns is tragically low. Agreed. It's a great game, and it's why, I'll be honest, it's why I thought I could put it in here as a possibility and get some folks. Uh, because, because yeah, it's, it's not ranked as high as probably it should be, but, eh, you know, what are you going to do? We're heading to our final question. James is on a tear. Jay is on a tear. Final question coming your way. Final question of the game. One thousand points it sits on this one are you ready i hope you are because we're going to award prizes in a second your final question here we go featured here is the revolution of 1828 about the u.s election of that year who won the election martin van buren andrew jackson john c calhoun or john quincy adams once again featured here is revolution of 1828 about the u.s election of that year who won it Martin Van Buren, Andrew Jackson, John C. Calhoun, or John Quincy Adams. Uh, obviously, also a Steffenfeld two-player game that I looked at earlier, and it's half price right now during the show. So uh, in a moment, when you find out you know less about that election than you hoped you did, uh, you have a chance to fix that. Let's take a look. 75% of the room guessing Andrew Jackson. 25% of the room guessing John Quincy Adams. Very good. As a room, you're on the correct 50-50. The other uh, two, Van Buren and Calhoun, uh, were different vice presidents under the correct answer to this question. And the correct answer is Andrew Jackson. Uh, 
Calhoun was his vice president the first time, Van Buren, I believe, his president the second time, and Van Buren was the president immediately following him. Uh, the Revolution of 1828 is all about the election between John Quincy Adams and Andrew Jackson that Andrew Jackson won. Uh, here are your scores at the end of the game. With 3,435 points, Jay is your winner. Getting a $100 gift certificate, gift card, uh, money. Yeah. Uh, to Renegade Games, Alex B. in second, James Brazil in third. Uh, everybody, contact Chris Whitpan to get your prize. He's right here. Or drop him an email at conventions at renegadegames.com. I believe that's correct. Uh, I know that I see Chris here. Uh, so uh, if I'm wrong, uh, correct it right now in the chat for me, Chris. I would really appreciate it. We are about to move on to game number two. Once again, we're playing two games today. The next game is not trivia-based, so don't worry if you don't know things. Uh, game number two is the in crowd. I'm going to move everybody over there. Once again, if you're in the top three places, Jay, Alex, James, make sure you contact Chris to get your prize uh, from the wonderful folks at Renegade Games. Thank you so much for playing. Once again, game number two coming your way. Here we go. Let me move you over and set you to the next round. You should be, your screen should now say Renegade Con Virtual, the in crowd. That is game number two. Uh, Jibs 14 noting they went from second to 16th. Headbanging Maniac, don't worry. Another game is about to come your way uh, for game number two. We're going to do, we're going to change the prize a little bit. Top prize is $50 for first place. Second and third is $25. Once again, that's all going to be uh, for Renegade Games uh, Store. We're going to start that up in just a moment. I have 15 players in the game. If you want in, scan the code in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, if you played this last convention, you're going to be ready for it. If not, it's going to, it's going to uh, mess with your head a little bit. I'm going to ask you opinion questions, answer however you feel, and hope you are in the in crowd. Once again, I'm going to ask you a question. Just tell me how you feel. There's nothing right or wrong at the time you answer the question. It changes before I reveal the answers. So once again, get ready for that. We're going to start up in just a second. Uh, 16 players are in the game. I'm going to start in just a moment. I want to get a quick sip because I'm talking a lot. Here we go. We're about to head into game number two, the in crowd. Ten. I still don't get a nine. I'm never allowed to have a nine. Chris noted it last time in the chat. Uh, that just nothing. I'm never allowed to have one. I don't know why. Here we go. What is the most powerful color? I'm going to put five colors on your device. Pick the one you think is the most powerful color. Here we go. Red, green, pink, yellow, or blue. Which of those do you think is the most powerful color? That's all you need to do is tell me how you feel. In a moment, you'll see how it's scored. Once again, just tell me how you feel. Red, green, pink, yellow, or blue. You have more time this time, although the faster you answer, the more points it's worth. But you're going to have more time to work on it because they're opinion questions. I want you to process it for a second. Uh, but once again, get in as fast as you can. So for question number one, if you are in the most popular group, the group with the most votes, you're going to get points. In this game, if there ever is a tie, all members of the tie, all possible ways, are going to get points. If I ever call for a position that has no possible answers for it, it's going to move to the next position available. So if I ask for the least popular and zero is there, it's going to move up one. We're always going to award points. If there is any way there could be a tie, every part of the tie is going to be awarded. Nope, no black. Uh, I can only fit five, and that's what I decided to do. I understand, though. Black was there. I get it. Uh, so let's take a look. The most popular answer is going to get points. Let's see. Going right down the line, nobody picked yellow. Blue getting seven. Pink getting 13. Green getting 27. Red is the most popular answer. So that means red is going to be marked correct. Let me make sure I have only red marked correct. And all the folks in red are going to get points. If you guessed red, you're going to get points in this question. Let's take a look. Beth leading with 97. Zenins with 93. Jibs go 14 uh, in third place. So uh, it's going to keep changing every time. You don't know that it's going to be the most popular. It just happened to be the most popular this time. Uh, so let's move on to question number two. Here we go. Who is the best vampire? 
Uh, once again, if you take a look, Vampire Rivals coming out from Renegade Games. Who is the best vampire? Blade from Marvel, Count Von Count from Sesame Street, Dracula the Universal Monster, Lestat de Lioncourt from Interview with the Vampire, or Spike from Buffy? Uh, who's the best vampire? You can use whatever uh, system you want to use for the best vampire. Whatever. I'm not here to tell you how to live. So for this one, right, Prosden's noting so many great options, so many good vampires. I want the second most popular. I don't want the most popular. That doesn't get points. The second most popular is going to get points. Let's take a look. So the most popular was Dracula. The second most popular was Blade. So Blade will be getting points on this question. Uh, let's note that. Let's take a look and give you points. And now let's take a look at the board. Nobody going for Lestat. Only two of you, uh, the two that are best of you, going for Count Von Count from Sesame Street. A lot of people guessing Dracula. Great vampire. Great vampire in the game space as well. Dracula's always been sort of uh, well-revered in this space. I'm shocked Spike didn't do better. I expected Spike to be the number one answer, and it wasn't. Um, I did not give you sparkly vampires this time. I've done this question before with sparkly vampires, and they either get all the votes or none of the votes, and that's not fun. Uh, Blade is what's going to score. Let's take a look. Jibs 14 with 186 is in the lead. Alex B is second. Beth H is third with 97 points. Uh, don't worry about the zeros. You got a lot of game ahead of you, and the scores work the exact same way. We're about to move on to question number three. Here we go. Who is more famous? Mickey Mouse, Pablo Picasso, Beyonce, or Michael Jordan? Who is more famous of these four? Mickey Mouse, Pablo Picasso, Beyonce, or Michael Jordan? Remember, I can score however I want to. Uh, Mickey Mouse, Pablo Picasso, Beyonce, or Michael Jordan? So, this one I'm going to do this time. It was a question about popularity. I want the least popular answer. Once again, the lowest number of votes is going to get points. I will remind you again, if anything is zero, zero is never the right answer. Somebody's always going to leave a question with points. So I want the least popular of the most famous. Let's take a look. 87% gave me Mickey Mouse. Clearly the most famous. No one gave me Pablo Picasso, so that means Beyonce and Michael Jordan at one vote each are going to tie, taking the points on this one. Uh, let's take a look. Let's award you your points. Beyonce and Michael Jordan are one of the least popular of the most famous. But Mickey Mouse across the board, nearly 90% of the room deciding that Mickey Mouse is more famous than Pablo Picasso, Beyonce, and Michael Jordan uh, combined many times over. Uh, let's take a look and see what that does to the scores. Jibs14 is in the lead. Toro has jumped up. Toro, uh, one of my two people uh, that gave me an answer that clearly the rest of the room thinks is completely wrong. Uh, Jay in third with 164. Uh, and that's how the game goes. The game can be harsh. Uh, the questions get weirder as we go along. We're moving on to question number four for 100 points. What is your favorite beverage? Coffee, tea, soda, or alcohol slash beer? I'm here drinking a soda, but is it coffee, tea, soda, or alcohol slash beer? Which is your favorite? No, no tonic water on this one. I guess you would put that under maybe soda. Might be what you would call that. I don't know. Might be what you'd call it. Once again, what's your favorite beverage? Coffee, tea, soda, or alcohol slash beer? For this one, I'm going to go back to the most popular. Most popular answer is going to score points. Let's take a look. At 47%, that would be soda. Uh, soda is going to take the lead on this one and is my number one answer, which I'm awarding points to this time. So let's take a look. Soda being that 33% of the room for tea, only one coffee drinker, which blows my mind because I will tell you normally any other time it would be a cup of coffee next to me, not a glass of soda. I normally drink a ton of coffee, but only one of you out there. And I'm shocked uh, at this late of hour in a uh, board game convention, I don't get more alcohol beer answers, but 47% give me soda. Let's take a look. Jibs of 14, leading with 277. Jay in second with 253. Beth H at 186. Those are my top three. Still some people at the bottom that have not scored anything. Don't worry. A lot of game left, and everything becomes more valuable soon. Uh, the end of round number one is coming your way. 100 points. Here we go. Which is the best pet? 
Bird, cat, dog, or fish? Which is the best pet? Bird, cat, dog, or fish? Uh, I just really love this gif right here of what I believe is like a hedgehog getting a massage, a massage, uh, which I think is wonderful. Uh, let's take a look. I, I No we for D, I see. I don't know what to do with that. I do not know what to do with that. Which is the best pet, bird, cat, dog, or fish? So let's have a moment, folks. At the top, we're just figuring out if there's more uh, cat people or dog people. I'm okay with that. So I'm going to take the number one answer. Whatever is the number one answer, you're going to get points. Let's take a look. It is dog people. 40 cats and fish are tied. Wow. I never would have guessed. Normally, it's either cat or dog is strong. The other of cat or dog is nearly as strong. And bird and fish fall by the wayside. But no. Cat and fish tied, but we look for the number one answer. And for that, we're going for dog. Dog is the number one answer. Dog is what's going to score. There we go. 47% of the room. Seven people giving me dog. A lot of points to be handed out. Uh, let's take a look. Let's show you the scores. Uh, Jibs was at 14. Still leading with 365. Jay at 334. Toro at 266. On one big question, that's all it takes to get in the game is one big question. And you are right in with everyone else. As we've learned a little bit, this is a dog room, uh, a, a dog, a dog room. It sounded like I said dog room, a dog room, uh, and nearly a, a, as many cat as fish people. Very strange to see. We're moving on. Uh, only two of us are bird owners that are probably drinking right now. <laughs> We're gonna move on. Question number six coming your way. The start of round number two. It's good for two hundred points. Here we go. Which is the best sport? Which is the best sport? Soccer slash football, basketball, badminton, or tennis. Um, we we're talking about the football. As you would think of it internationally, we're talking about soccer. Uh, soccer, football, basketball, badminton, or tennis. Which of those is the best sport? Uh, it could be your favorite or just one that you think for one reason or another is of value. Which is the best sport? We've gone popular the last couple of times. I'm going to go least popular again. The least popular answer is going to get points. Let's take a look. Oh, with a single answer, that will be tennis that will be scoring this time. Tennis, our least popular sport. Uh, three people in badminton and basketball. I expected soccer football to be the most popular. Normally is. Uh, but basketball and badminton tied. Uh, wow. I don't know what to do with that. That is that is strange. Uh, but we looked at the least popular. That was tennis. Tennis scores the points. Let's see what does the board. Uh, Jibs to 14. With 365, Jay in second with 334, Alex in third with 315. A lot of game to go, a lot of points available out there. Let's take a look, see if anybody had anything uh, to do. You, me you messed with us, it's America. I guess I'm trying to get, don't worry, Rezbeck, there's a lot of game ahead of us. You can still jump in, and you can do it on this question, question number seven for 200 points. Here we go. Which is the most important invention? The nail, the light bulb, the telephone, or the internet? Which is the most important invention? The nail, the light bulb, the telephone, or the internet? And a Wallace and Gromit gif, uh, which makes me happy. I just think it's fun to be able to put that in there. Uh, clearly about to use an invention of some kind or another. Once again, the nail, the light bulb, the telephone, or the internet? Um, I want the second most popular answer. I don't want the most popular. I want the second most popular answer. Let's take a look. The most popular answer is the, the none of you guessed went with the nail. That's how you build things is with the nail. Second most popular answer. There is a tie for that between the light bulb and the telephone. So both the light bulb and the telephone are going to score. The light bulb and the telephone both pulling off points for that one. The internet getting the number one. Uh, stack of answers in this one, which is shocking to me because uh, you don't have a building without nails. But gosh darn it, there we go. White bulb and the telephone tied for second, so they are going to get the points. Let's see what that does to the scores. Alex leading with 501, Jay in second, 473, Toro with 445. Resbeck still swinging and missing. Hopefully there, there's hope coming. There has to be hope coming. Mechanical trousers and cheese. Yes, Thank you, Wallace and Gromit fans. That was for you. Moving on to question number eight. Question number eight, good for 200 points. Here we go. What's your favorite season? Spring, summer, fall, slash autumn, or winter? What's your favorite season? To me, 
There is only one correct answer, and most of you are not going to give it, I think. Once again, what's your favorite season? Spring, summer, fall slash autumn, or winter? Also, this is just another fun gif. I just like seeing this uh, goose walk around. I'm a simple man. Let's see. For this one, I'm trying to figure out how to, to, to get to you, Resbeck. I want to find you. I'm going to go least popular and see if we get you there. Least popular answer is going to score points here. Uh, let's take a look. Winter, the least popular answer. Winter is going to score on this one. Uh, let's take a look there. Uh, and let's bring that up. Let's score the points. So 40% of you giving me fall or autumn because you're right. You're absolutely right. Fall or autumn is the best season, uh, even on summer and spring, which I find shocking. Because uh, to me, spring and fall are the two that you should fight for. And summer and winter are the admission prices you have to pay to get to fall and spring. That's just how I feel about it. But the least popular answer gets it. Winter ends up being the correct answer. Let's take a look and see what that does to the scores. Alex B now in the lead with 501. Jay in second with 473. Toro at 445. Resbeck, we're going to get you. We're going to find you, Resbeck. I know we are. We're trying and we will. What has happened here? Sorry, one of my uh, one of my devices is uh, plugged in, but also showing low batteries. So I don't know how that works. Uh, Resbeck just has bad timing to choose the popular answer. Don't worry, more game ahead of us. We have plenty more time. Question number nine, 200 points, Resbeck. You can get in the game. Here we go. What's this called? Is that Coke, soda, or pop? What's that called? Coke, soda, or pop? Very regional. We're going to figure out where everybody is. Um, specifically, it is a Pepsi. Uh, is that Coke soda or pop? That's what I want to know. Which of those, which of those things are you looking at there? We're trying to figure out our regions and I want the middle answer. The middle answer is going to score. Not the most popular, not the least popular. I want the middle answer to give me points here. Let's take a look. Oh, pop is no one said Coke. Nobody from the South. I also don't say Coke. I stay soda myself, uh, personally. But I asked for the middle answer. Middle answer is going to be soda. Soda is going to score here. Let's take a look. Let me get you those points. Yep, there we go. Soda is going to score. Soda was my middle answer. Good work. Sixty getting some points there. I hope I was back up. We found you. Let's take a look. Jay Lady was 662. Toro in second. Uh, Jizzle 14 in third. Resback still swings and misses. Oh. I'm going to keep trying to find you, Resbeck. I'm going to keep trying to work it out. I hope to eventually get you. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. You and I will find the timing. We're going to do this before this is over, or so I hope. Uh, but we're heading to question number 10, 200 more points. Let's get you in the game. Here we go. What do you eat rice with? A spoon, a fork, or chopsticks. What do you eat rice with? A spoon, a fork, or chopsticks. Which of those things is the thing that you eat rice with? That's the question. Let's see here. Let's take a look. I think it all depends on how international a crowd we have as to what your answer is in this one. Uh, for this one, I'll take the most popular answer. Whatever the most popular answer is, the one that I'll take. What do you eat rice with? A spoon, a fork, or chopsticks? Let's take a look. Wow. So 47% most popular answer goes to the fork. 40% of the room giving me chopsticks. Uh, 13% give me a spoon. I called for the most popular answer. That is going to be the fork, which to me makes the least sense uh, for rice because I feel like if you were going to do it with a scoop, you would just do it with a spoon. But there you go. Fork, most popular answer. That's the one that we're taking. Let's take a look. Let's see how it scores. Jay leading with 827. Toro with 779. Alex B in third. And I always have to look. Resback still swinging and missing. We're going to do this. We're going to figure this out. We are going to figure this out. Uh, Baxter noting lies, doesn't believe it, doesn't think that's how it works out, but it's an opinion game. We're learning about everybody else in the room. We're also learning that we do not know how we're going to figure out where Resback is in this game, but we're going to find them. Uh, we are headed into round three. This is where the points go up pretty sharply, if you remember from game number one. 300 point question coming your way. Here we go. Which superhero team? The Avengers, the X-Men, or the Justice League? Which superhero team? The Avengers, the X-Men, or the Justice League? Which one are we looking for here? I don't know. Which team are you picking? 
the Avengers, the X-Men, or the Justice League. And once again, another Wallace and Gromit I got to throw in there because it makes me happy. It's fun. A lot of people know it depends on what kind of rice. I suppose that's true. I just have to figure out what you're off the hip. What kind of rice do you think it is? Uh, I don't know that we can get more elaborate with that question. Maybe I'll think about it. Maybe there's a way I can. The Avengers, the X-Men, or the Justice League? I want the least popular answer. Uh, the least popular answer is going to score points. Let's take a look. 33% of the room going with the Justice League. 47% going to the Avengers. The least popular answer is the X-Men. The X-Men, the least popular answer here, which blows my mind. Uh, I thought it was going to be the Justice League. It's almost always the Justice League. Uh, but you've proven me wrong. The X-Men is the least popular answer this time. That's the one that's going to score points. Question number 11, 300 points. Let's see what it did. Toro is now taking a lead on the X-Men at 1,050. Jay in second. Uh, Azir, 1228. Resbeck still missing. Oh, Resbeck, are you trying? Oh, my goodness. We do love an underdog here. Resbeck, I'm hoping for you. I really am. I'm hoping to see you get in the game. A lot of points still available. I think it might get a little easier for you. We'll see. Let's take a look. Question number 12, 400 points. Here we go. Clank or Clank in space? Clank or Clank in space? That's the question you have ahead of you. Which one is it? Clank or Clank in space? The questions are starting to get more and more difficult. As you notice, we started with five answers, went down to four answers, went down to three answers. We are now down to 50-50s. Every time is a 50-50. Uh, one thing I'll reveal to you in the 50-50s round is I'm always going to look for the most popular answer uh, because a lot of these are pretty highly debated things potentially. So we're always looking for the most popular answer from this point forward, okay? Uh, the questions get weirder a little bit. Uh, but the scoring now is going to become very regimented and regular. Uh, most popular answer, Clank or Clank in space? 80% of the room gives me Clank. Clank is what's going to score. There we go. Let's take a look. Let's give you those points, and let's see what that does to the scores. Toro leading with 1439, but that's not what I care the most about. Jay in second, Alex B in third, Resbeck still missing. Picking the wrong side of it yet again. Uh, Toro is going to get our $50 gift card. Jay and Alex B getting our $25 gift cards uh, if we end the game right now. But we're not. We still have a few more questions to go. Uh, we're hoping to see Resbeck get in this. I uh, We'll figure it out, man. We'll figure it out. Question number 13 for 500 points. Here we go. Kids on bikes or kids on brooms? Kids on bikes or kids on brooms? Which of those? Uh, which, 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 which one do you want? Kids on bikes, kids on brooms? They're both available. They're both out there. Take a look in the Renegade store. You're going to find them both. Both kids on bikes and kids on brooms. Which one for you? Kids on bikes or kids on brooms? We'll see. We're looking for the most popular answer. Resback trying to figure out where that's going to be. Let's take a look. Most popular answer. 60-40. Kids on bikes. Kids on bikes is going to get the points here. Let's go. Kids on bikes. Kids on brooms. Uh really as close as we could be one or two people shift over this is 50 50 let's take a look mark that kids on bikes with the, the scores jay leading with 1693 alex in second with 1569 toro in third resback is in the game yes welcome welcome to the game resback i'm happy to see it oh no and you're in when the points are big uh you know what and i'm gonna do something right now uh to celebrate that resback is back in the game I'm going to give away a $25 gift card randomly. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Stare at your screens. Let's see if this works. Uh, right now, that should bring like a fun little wheel up on everybody's screen. Uh, and let's take a look. I should have picked a winner. One of you should now have won a prize. James Brazil. James Brazil, you just won a $25 gift card for Renegade Games. Uh, contact Chris. Uh, in all the ways you can contact Chris, he's here. Tell him right now. Uh, Chris, James Brazil just won a fifty uh, $25 gift card for Renegade Games. Uh, congratulations. Congratulations. Just an extra little one we were giving away. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for being a part of it. We're about to move on to question number 14. It's time for the pep talk. There are 1,750 points available. There are more points available in the final two questions than Jay has right now. Res back. You're in this game, Resback. I promise you. 
1,750 points coming your way. Question number 14, 750 points. Here we go. Who would win a fight? One 200 kilogram goose or 201 kilogram geese? Once again, who would win a fight? One 200 kilogram goose or 201 kilogram geese? Oh, this also allowed me to use this GIF and that makes me happy. You've learned through these. I love to do that. A bunch of people congratulating James. Congratulations, James. Uh, Enjoy your $25 gift card for uh, Renegade. And thank you so much for sticking around for the game. And thank thank you to all of you for sticking around here for game number two, uh, which is almost done. This is question number 14 of 15. Uh, Most popular answer gets it. Who would win a fight? One 200 kilogram goose or 201 kilogram geese? The correct answer. 201 kilogram geese. You have decided as a room that strength in numbers is how you think this would go down. Uh, A whole bunch of tiny geese rather than one like borderline car sized goose. 201 kilogram geese is how we're going to do it. Let's see what that does to the scores. Jay leading with 2415. Alex B in second. Uh, Ezir 1228 in third. Uh, Resback is one for 15. Uh, Don't worry. You got one more chance in the game. Final question of the game. 1,000 points at the end of this. Once again, first place gets a $50 gift certificate, gift card. Uh, Next two places are going to get $25 a piece. And of course, uh, James Brazil also uh, got $25. Here is your final question of the game. Watch your devices. Here we go. Which is it better to be? Loved or feared? Which is it better to be? Loved or or feared? That is your final question of the game for 1,000 points. Uh, you have to decide how you think the other side of the room is going to go. Is everybody going to come with you? Do they think the way you, you you do? Who knows? I have promised you we go with the most popular answer. We are going to go with the most popular answer. Is it better to be loved or feared? 87% of the room going with love. That's how we're going to score it. To the other two of you, that's what you get. Uh, be afraid. Uh, here are your, so let's, let's mark that correct. Wait, oh, let's bring it back. Let's mark something correct. Let's mark loved correct. Now let's fix it. There we go. Let's take a look at the scores at the end of the game. Winning a $50 gift card, Jay with 33.43 uh, in second and third place, uh, each winning a $25 gift card. Alex B in second, Rob S in third. Congratulations to all of our winners. Thank you so much for being a part of uh, Board Game the Game Show. Takes over some of Renegade Con here in the late, late hours of the of the convention day. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this. Congratulations to all the winners. Remember, contact Chris. Uh, either con- contact Chris Whitpen over on Discord or uh, send an email to conventions at renegadegames.com and you will get him as well. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this. I'm going to pull big here. Thank you for being a part of the shindig. Thank you for hanging out with me here in the late hours. Remember, uh, I am the moderator of the Party Gamecast, featuring the Party Gamecast. You can find me there at Party Gamecast. I also run Board Game the Game Show on YouTube. Check it out there. Uh, we mix board games and game shows a little bit like we did here. Uh, to all of you, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you for coming here. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Get ready for day number two of Renegade Con coming up tomorrow. If you want to see me, I'll be a part of day number three. I'll be a part of Sunday right after the morning show. We will be doing, I think we're calling it the match game. It's going to feel a lot like the dating game, but for board games, I will see you then. To every one of you, stay safe. Stay sane, enjoy your prizes, go play games, go have fun. Thank you so much. Have an absolutely fantastic night.